Once I hit that five year mark, it's like, well, now I'm in uncharted territories as far as statistics, statistics go. In 2016, I decided I was going to run a half marathon, trained for several months, no problems, no issues, anything like that. In December, I actually did the half marathon, first competitive race I've ever done. Well, that was another uh, kind of a check off my bucket list kind of thing. I uh, you know, went back to work after the holidays and I would take the stairs at work instead of take the elevators. I was starting to get short of breath at the top of the stairs. I'm like, oh, maybe I'm just out of shape now, you know, after I just ran and all this and that. So taking the holidays off. So didn't think that much of it. Uh, but then it was getting worse and worse. So it kind of progressed um, and progressively it got so bad that just walking uh, down a long hallway would get me winded. I went to my primary care doctor. He did x-rays and did the test that he could. And he said, there is something in your lungs, but from the test that he does, just from a general standpoint, he couldn't pinpoint what it was. He referred me to a lung specialist. He did all the tests that he would normally do. And same thing, he said, there's something there, but from all the tests that I see, I can't pinpoint it. But um, we can do a lung biopsy. When I came back from that surgery, uh, the doc, the surgeon came in with an oncologist and I, I didn't know anything about oncology, cancer, any kind of, you know, anything about it. So they told me it was adenocarcinoma, which meant nothing to me. And I said, well, doctor, you're probably gonna have to simplify that for me. And so he basically said, it's cancer and it's either coming from your stomach or pancreas. They checked my pancreas. Fortunately, it was okay. It was fine. Um, then uh, they did an endoscopy and they uh, found some cell, or they found an ulcer in my stomach. And that was the source of the adenocarcinoma. It had gone into some lymph nodes and then also into my lungs, which is, not as typical. They were telling me it was more palliative care, which means just try to ease out as much as possible, just to kind of extend your life basically. So I went to MD Anderson in Houston and for a second opinion on the treatment, they told me pretty much the same thing. So I said, okay, well, I can just do this where I live so I don't have to travel to Houston for treatment every, you know, two to three weeks. I actually went through chemo, which was, it wasn't as strong of a chemo because it was palliative. It wasn't actually trying to cure it. It was just trying to treat it and, you know, extend life. Fortunately, my scans after the six months was positive. The masses that were in me were actually shrinking. So I did a couple more cycles and then I actually stopped chemotherapy. One thing I did do was continue with maintenance treatment for uh, HER2, since I was HER2 positive, this protein that's on the cells, those cancerous cells, actually help those cells gain nutrients. The maintenance treatment attacks that protein to basically try to starve out the cells. And I've been doing it for six and a half years now. My quality of life is normal. It's it's actually really good compared to, you know, others that have gone through same diagnosis. Maintain a positive mindset and always maintain hope, even no matter how small it may look like or how hopeless the situation is. I know it it's not scientifically proven, but to me, it felt like that's what helped my treatments. Kind of, yeah, yeah, I am. But at the same time, you know, there's still some realism that comes into play where, you know, this could pop back up any 
time, Stuart Scott, the ESPN commentator, he just coincidentally had the exact chemo that I did. He has a quote, when you die, you don't lose to cancer. You beat cancer by how you live, why you live, and the manner in which you live. The way I live and I am living now is it's not about my diagnosis or treatment or anything like that. I'm just living my life. I can't change things that are thrown at me, like the diagnosis and the treatments and the effectiveness and all that, but I can control what I do daily.